Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Izuri Gardens now. Um, this is episode 1.5. This isn't a proper episode, this is a sneaky little quiet episode that we're not going to tell anybody about, okay? So sh it's just between me and you and Mast and everyone else who watches it. But um, yeah, this wasn't meant to be my turn and it isn't my turn really, which is why it's 1.5. What is going to be happening with these episodes is we are going to be taking interns to do an episode. Uh, they are shifting though from Fridays, which is um, when we normally pull out content, or I especially normally pull out content, uh, to Mondays. Uh, and that's because... Um, the, uh, the time difference, basically, for me and Mass to record together to do the audio for the episodes. Um, we currently, because uh, Mass works uh, a sort of regular job, he's a teacher, so he works sort of normal, sort of office -y type hours. Um, so he's only really able to record uh, anything when his children have gone to bed, which is around about 7pm his time, which is around about, at the moment, 2 or 3 in the morning for me. <laughs> now, in about 8 or 9 weeks, it's not going to be that much of a problem, because I'm actually moving to North America, I'm moving to Canada, so after that points we can be a little bit more free and easy but at the moment the only real time we have to record is weekends where he can record sort of like a morning uh, afternoon time and then it's sort of afternoon evening for me because we're, we're, we're about five or six hours behind I think um, so yeah that's the plan we're moving to Monday so the that's why we're, bit, we're shifting everything a little bit further the reason why we're here today building some stuff uh, in Azuri well not actually in Azuri because Master's got the proper park these are just being built uh, as blueprints that we're going to be able to hopefully place in next week when I get it back um, the reason we're here and not in Pinewood Hills is because I've just I've got new park fever this I, I won't lie there's no other reason in that I I, um, I just want to really play with this theme and play with this style and uh, just get my teeth into it and I'm just really enjoying myself so there's no other reason <laughs> uh, than that to be honest with you sorry <laughs> um so yeah this style is um adventure kind of style this these buildings i'm building today and i know the stuff that master has been working on for the main area the main sort of plaza is very heavily based on islands of adventure in um in florida universal's park and um, it's an interesting one to be honest with you because it's one of the one of the influences we we sort of came up together with when we first started working on this project. We were like, okay, Bush Gardens, Islands of Adventure, Disney's Animal Kingdom, all sort of high themed adventure, big budget parks. Um, Islands of Adventure, Islands of Adventure, excuse me. It's a bit of a like, uh, what's the best way to describe it? It's a bit of a sort of thing unto itself almost really. The scale is pretty big for a park, like height-wise of buildings is pretty huge. Definitely much bigger than anything I've tried to build since I've been building this sort of realistic style. And also much bigger and more detailed than pretty much all of our other influences. Although Bush Gardens has got uh, quite a bit going on with it. I noticed with Animal Kingdom, there isn't, like, it, it's right, it's quite low detail i guess really there's quite a lot of sort of like wood buildings with with some small detailings and stuff they have higher themed areas their africa area is really nice which i'm going to be taking some stuff from um but islands of adventure especially this sort of what they call the port of entry um it's just there's stuff everywhere there's stuff hanging off buildings there's there's banners and ropes and sticks and and ferris wheels and not ferris wheels uh, windmills and like there's a plane coming in and there's just there is just stuff everywhere and um i'll be honest with you it kind of took me by surprise when i really i mean i've been to one's adventure a few times now i love it one of my favorite theme parks in the world but it wasn't until i actually started looking at it um critically you know with an actual sort of uh, a design eye on um, that i realized just how just it's just a hot mess it really is and i kind of love it though so that i think we're gonna have our sort of main area our main plaza uh, very influenced by islands of adventure but then as the park goes out we're gonna probably tone it down a little bit um which again kind of follows how a lot of parks go you know that first sort of big tadar is very sort of uh, crazy and huge but then it kind of it kind of you know the budget starts to go a little as we go through but definitely high budget high detail this park is going to be um the actual park itself is going to be relatively small like like we said before this isn't going to be a huge project that takes us like two years okay it's not going to be the next bro nation it's not going to be the next pinewood hills it's not going to be the next uh kind of a slopes um so you know we're going to be actually the main park itself is going to be relatively small most of the map is going to be used uh, to do a safari um talking of safari we've had some awesome animals being produced we've got an 
elephant, we've got a giraffe, we've got a zebra, uh, or a zebra, we've got, um, there's a few, obviously there's a few stuff that was there before we started this project that we want to be using as well, um, so yeah, it's amazing, thank you so much to all of the awesome creators uh, who have been um, knocking out animals, it's, it's fantastic, can't wait to get some of them in the park, my, my next proper episode, so when I get it back from Mast, I will probably start doing a bit more animal work, um, so we can move away, because the problem with these buildings is, as much as I've enjoyed building them, because of how detailed they are and because of how careful you have to be to lot, not let that scale get away from you um, with the Planko parts, um, they take an age. Like this, what you're watching here is sped up to about 15 minutes. There's probably about 20 hours work here, really. Uh, some of this was done on a live stream. The first bit there was done on a Twitch live stream. So if you want to kind of see a bit more of my thought process with this, make sure you're following over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash geekism. Uh, we usually play Planko once or twice a week, um, depending on what I, how I'm really feeling about it. Twitch is not so much the... Um, just creative sim type stuff we play a little bit of everything over on twitch it's a bit it's a bit of a way of me to sort of like you know spread my wings a little bit and just sort of play a bit various so sometimes if i'm not really in the mood to be super creative or play a bit of world of warcraft or uh, or something like that uh, later today or well it'll have gone by the time this comes out but i'll have played a bit of sims i think we're gonna do a sims build today so yeah a bit of a bit of everything over on twitch but one thing i did do is, is the start of this build uh, this second build wasn't on twitch i kind of did this one um just regular sort of time lapse I'm, I'm so happy with how this turned out i think it's i think i genuinely think it's one of the best things i've ever built and i know i've said that a few times but I'm just so happy with how this comes out. It is based on a, um, I think it's a food shop of some description in, I think it sells fudge in Islands of Adventure. Um, but it's, it, 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 I use the building in the in, as a starting off point and a sort of way of, of um, sort of planning it out. But uh, it's kind of, kind of finds its own sort of vibe once we get into it. But I'm just really happy with how I how I've used um, pieces here to to create some depth and texture. And I know this is something that Mask has talked about. Um, a lot of these buildings, the colour scheme is actually relatively subdued. It's pretty much all sandstone, so it's lots of sort of light browns, um, whites. Uh, tan kind of colours, you know, and some darker brown for detailing. And then some parts of the buildings themselves will have a, a flash of colour, but it's all very subdued colour. Um, sort of like... Uh you know, sort of like pastels and stuff. Or, or actually, not so much pastels. They probably were bright when they're originally painted, but they're very sun bleached. I guess that's kind of the way you would. Sort of, although they've been designed that way, that would that's kind of the feel, feel they're going for. So one thing um, that you really struggle with is is being re really unable to get some sort of variation with color. So instead, you have to get variation in the buildings through depth and through texture. And that's something that I haven't really thought about too much before uh, with my time in the game. So um, the one thing I've really, really sort of started to work on here is, is thinking about textures and thinking about um, small uh, degrees of depth and how that really can sort of add to a building. I know that's something I've talked about uh, a little bit before on Pinewood when we redid the vintage area. You know, depth was a very important aspect of the rebuild there, um, but it really is here more so than any before, really. Um, again, these buildings, they're, they're pretty huge. They're bigger than anything I've really built um, in Pinewood, um, but that's it's kind of that's the scale of Islands of Adventure. It, again, it's really something that kind of shocked me, to be honest with you. So I've actually made these smaller than the islands of adventure builds to be honest with you um they've all been truncated a little bit and i've tried to sort of really get the idea of um uh, false perspective into them which is something that again they don't do as much in islands of adventure false perspective is very much a disney thing um so uh, whilst universal does do it pretty well in some areas like the harry potter area has really good false perspective um it not yeah it's not not found as much here here i'm breaking away a little bit from the uh, from the the original um uh what's the words uh, piece that i've been using i don't know uh is that kind of ridiculous using that whole pirate storage there just to get a couple of boxes i would love all those pieces on that pirate storage i would love all those as separate pieces because they are so useful the, the sacks i would love the sacks just on their own especially for these kind of builds it's all about sort of uh, supply expedition supplies. That's the other thing I've noticed with these shops in, in Islands of Adventure. 
they pretty much all, well, they're all just gift shops or sweet shops or, or food shops or whatever, but all of them are branded like their expedition shops, like uh, supplies for expeditions. So I think we might have to try and vary that up a little bit. Um, this the, the first build on the left there, I actually have the sign saying souvenirs, which it does say in Islands of Adventure. This one, I can't remember what it actually says. I think it might just be like an island trading or something like that. Uh, and we've, we've put it as an expedition trading post. Uh, here, again, really happy with how this turned out. I'm using some of the um, roller coaster um, station cover pieces to give us little gaps in the wall there, and then sinking some rough brick behind them, and then using some small windows as walls, the same ish colour, um, to kind of break it up and make it look all cracks and everything. So it looks like the plaster has come away from the rock. Um, and people have done this before, I'm sure. I, I've not seen it, but I'm sure there's, I'm not the first person to come up with this. But I was just, I was just so pleased with it. I was so happy with how it turned out. I don't, I, I have a bit of a habit in in my uh, in my videos to be relatively um, negative about my work. I often say, oh, it's okay, it's good enough, or whatever. Um, honestly, I must sound weird to be honest to hear it from me, but I'm genuinely really happy with how this building turned out. Um, and something I know, uh, Mass said on his live stream the other day. I, unfortunately, I don't get to watch him live if he streams in the evenings because as i say it's the middle of the night for me um but i always watch them back um usually to see if he said anything about me <laughs> which he did he tried, tried to give me a nickname it, it ain't sticking i'll tell you now it ain't sticking i'm not even gonna tell you what it is um but um yeah one thing he mentioned on the live stream was um was that when you build uh, as, a, as a group when, when it's a sort of collaboration project or even if you're building in someone else's park or something like that your effort goes through the roof you put so much more effort into something and i don't know whether it's just um that you want it to be good for for the other person or maybe a little bit if i'm totally honest with you maybe a little bit like you want to make sure that you don't let like you want to you're not letting the side down kind of thing you know and your stuff looks as good as their stuff <laughs> so i think it's maybe a little bit of both it's one it's a little bit uh, altruistic that you want it to be good for them but then also i think it's like well no i better pull my finger right here because i don't want to be i don't want to be the worst builder in the team you know <laughs> um so uh yeah it's it's an interesting idea we're definitely definitely spending a lot of time over selection here there's much less uh that'll do here that I normally build with and uh, whether that'll keep up whether it's because it's a new project or not I don't know uh, you'll find these buildings are relatively unfinished when it comes to the sides and the back and that's really just because I don't know where they're going to go in our build yet and how they're going to interact with other buildings so at the moment they're just sort of these small uh, sort of self-contained islands that we will um, obviously have to tie into the other buildings using some uh, less detailed wall pieces and stuff. Uh, there's another thing, I, I think I remember Sylv talking about it on a video once and the idea that um, you should have areas that are less detailed to bring out the, um, the eye lines for the areas that are more detailed, if that makes sense. Um, so certain buildings need to have sort of spaces where there's less going on. So in in this build, the, um, the the actual base of the build is quite detailed, uh, and the sort of uh, the balcony area around the head, um, uh, around head height or just overhead height, I suppose. The next section where the sort of where that cracked wall is is actually quite plain. There's not as much going on there, and then the roof section that we're going to be doing later on um, goes again a slightly higher detail. It has quite a high detailed roof area uh, that again I've really tried to truncate down and and and, and give a give a concept of false perspective, but that that idea of that sort of plainer area in the front and to an extent the, the pillars here you know it's a sort of rather large swashes of, of, of uh, stucco um, so I really wanted to make sure that that's something that I, I pay attention to as well here because like I say colour um, isn't as, as a valuable tool here you instead have to use other techniques to draw attention to the eye like, uh, like areas of, of detail and, and, and texture and stuff um, the other thing we've done here is left most of the shops empty. Well, both of these shops are empty. Again, depending on how they fit in with the path, decides on whether or not we put something in them or not. We are not going to be doing too many interiors. Um, that's something we decided quite early on, was that we would just have a few sort of show interiors to kind of show that we can do them, I guess, and also just to give a little bit of depth to areas. But for the most part, what we're going to do is either have the buildings just, just be shop frontage, uh, just be sort of... Um, uh, just just to look at um or we may have the doors open and stick an actual food store in there so that people come in and out of them or we may have the doors open or windows open and just kind of create the the false uh interior so uh, you know just like a scene that you'll see as you wander past the window or the or the door 
Uh, for both these cases at the moment, I've left that completely open because, like I said, until we put them all down and figure out how they're going to interact with the path and other shops, I don't know whether I want these to actually be sort of uh, food shops or, or what. You to be careful sometimes, if you put too many food shops around, as far as the game's concerned, you just get, like, like masses of people and... Um, that's something we're not gonna gonna want so it may well be that some of these buildings become just uh, sort of things for show but so far I know myself and master both worked on these kind of uh, uh, iconic buildings these sort of the, the, the main pillars of the area really and then once they can all go in we can then start filling in the gaps with just some sort of more more fake shop fronts and, and just sort of like wall details and some foliage and areas to sit and store buggies and all that kind of thing really uh, here's the roof. I um, man, these things are tough to build with the the way the, uh, <laughs> the 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 advanced move thing is at the moment. So trying to keep it on the grid as best as I can, but it is a hexagon. So um, actually, no, it's an octagon, isn't it? So four of the walls aren't on the the uh, the lineup for the grid, but I think it worked out quite well in the end. It looks a little um, janky because, it, like for instance, here I'm having to kind of estimate a little bit. So when, when we actually line everything up like this, it's a little off. But to be honest with you, I, I'm just going to kind of say it's a design choice. <laughs> uh, because these buildings are a little bit sort of rustic and uh, or meant to look at least rustic and sort of hobbled together and cobbled together. So um, I'm kind of okay with it. And to be honest with you, it's it's the roof piece. It's going to be not very seen very often. It, and it, and, and it, it doesn't look anywhere near as bad as I'm making out, by the way. It's just I, I know there are going to be a couple of perfectionists who are watching who are like... Mm -hmm. There was, there's a couple of uh, wooden pipes that don't quite line up there. Um, we got some mirrors in. Oh, that, that's the end. We, we, we did fill the roof in. I don't know why there's no footage of that. Sorry. Right, thanks for watching. <laughs> I came out of nowhere. Uh, like I say, this was a mini episode. The proper one is going to be on Monday over on Masks channel. Uh, so make sure you subscribe over there. I'll put a link. The first link in the description uh, will be a link to... Oh, no, no. The first link after the after the fold will be Masks channel. So please go over there. Show him some love. Let him know that we're coming. Uh, a new episode on Monday. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, all that. Love you all to bits. I'll see you in the next one.